my story is one that I yes I am an MD I went to uh, I went to medical school and I did my training in the um, in emergency medicine I was actually an ER doctor at Dell Children's and at Brackenridge but I actually went into medicine knowing I would do this I just didn't know how to get there so um, I was president of the complementary and alternative interest group I did all my electives in holistic and alternative medicine um, I had also been a Peace Corps volunteer so I knew if I never found sort of functional medicine that I could at least do international health and yeah. and things like that. But yes, I am con I am originally conventionally trained. Uh, I'm not opposed to conventional medicine at all. I mean, we do a really great job at a lot of different things in conventional medicine. I don't think we do a great job at managing chronic disease or finding the root cause or preventing. Sure. Patients are demanding that that they have more time with their doctor, that they listen to them, that they have you know, more natural ways to treat what they have and really get to the root cause. And as more and more people hear about it, it's, it's just exploding across the country. So I like to give the example of our gut sits together with these tight junctions and we digest and absorb through our teeny tiny villi and we're digesting teeny tiny particles of food, our micronutrients. And as we bombard our system with, you know, antibiotics, uh, prednisone, um, NSAIDs, uh, certain types of food, stress, these tight junctions break apart. And then large particles that weren't meant to get in to our bloodstream do. Um, I like to think of it as sort of as a, as a uh, drawbridge. The tiny, the tiny boats can get through. That's what's supposed to. Our gut is normally semi-permeable to allow these nutrients to get in. That's how we absorb our food. But when the you know, moat is, or the drawbridge is left open, then large boats that maybe weren't supposed to get through can get through. Our gut is one cell layer thick and our immune system, almost 80% of it sitting right there. So as you can imagine, as something foreign like a big gluten particle or a casein particle or a virus comes through into our bloodstream and our immune system detects it as foreign, it goes to attack it. And then that creates an inflammatory state. I mean, I could go on and on about this, about how certain molecules of infections um, or even foods look very similar to some of our own body tissues. And so when our immune system goes to attack that, it can inadvertently attack, say, our thyroid, and then we end up with autoimmune thyroid. It's one of the theories behind you know, mm -hmm. auto, certain types of autoimmune diseases. So it can have enormous impact from uh, from some mild inflammation all the way up to your own body attacking itself with autoimmunity. And what is the state of functional medicine in Austin? Oh, there are a lot here in Austin. We were just in Dallas last weekend. I was speaking at an autism conference and um, people were asking for recommendations in the Dallas area. And I mean, I, I know of one nutritionist that's there that has a clinic, but you know, in, in big cities like Houston and Dallas, you'd think because of the populations, there'd be so many more, but there actually aren't. Many, many people travel from Houston and Dallas to see me and probably other functional medicine doctors here. So, I mean, it's what attracted me to Austin is the open-mindedness, it's the healthy attitude, it's the outdoor attitude. So it, it is a really, I think, a great place for an alternative or functional medicine doctor to practice. Do you see any harm in parents trying some of these diets on their own in their children? I don't think that there's any harm, frankly, in someone giving up corn, uh, dairy, soy, and, and in uh, gluten. I mean, I, I just, what is the harm? I mean, it, particularly if you're replacing those really not very nutritious, calorie dense, highly processed foods with real food, it's sort of a farce that they're going to be missing out. And I think gluten and dairy for most people are very, very inflammatory foods. And it's a great place that I recommend pla patients or parents start with their kids. It's just simply taking out gluten and dairy. Let's take the concept of leaky gut that really um, is beginning to hit mainstream. I mean, first off, what people don't understand is that it takes about 18 years from something being in the scientific literature to reach mainstream medicine and medical schools. And there is plenty of research out there about leaky gut. And we know about zonulin and that rises as when you have a leaky gut. There are drug companies actively racing to find a drug that blocks zonulin. And there's one out there that I think is in clinical trials right now. Once that gets approved, Every GI doctor out there will be talking all about leaky gut and give you their drug for the zonulin blocker. But until that happens, people are like, what is that? That's hokey, that's crazy, where it's all over. I mean, do a literature search, it's all over. Dr. Fasano at Harvard is the leading researcher of 
um, leaky gut. And I have many, many scientific articles supporting that concept, you know, in, in my book. Every day I see people, you know, coming into my office like that and walking out with hope and coming back again off these medications with the restored life and sense of purpose and, you know, they're believers. And so I'm on a mission to, to change the face of conventional medicine and, and help people know that there's another way for sure.